It's the early 1970s. Nobody wants to make adaptations of George Orwell books anymore and the Conservative government is completely mired in industrial strife in the UK. So, you work in television and you're an Orwell admirer. What do you do? You make documentaries about left-wing politics and the road to Wigan Pier. I'll be brief because there's only two productions to talk about in the 1970s. Number one is George Orwell, The Road to the Left, shown on the BBC in January of 1971. This was a personal essay by Melvin Bragg, a man who's had a very distinguished career in arts broadcasting and is now a lord. And its thesis was as follows. Orwell had a privileged background, Old Etonian, served with the Imperial Police in Burma, became a freelance writer in England in the 1930s and didn't become properly left-wing until 1936. We we're talking about the year that his novel Keep the Aspidistra Flying was published, that he took a commission from the Left Book Club to investigate poverty in the north of England. Uh, he got married to his first wife Eileen and then at Christmas time he went off to Spain to fight fascism in the Civil War. He says himself that what he had to write became entirely political. He cared about words, but those words assumed a political form because life had to be political. Britain's class distinctions are very obvious in this documentary. Bragg conducted interviews that are historically priceless now. And some of them are with Orwell's family and friends. Very well-to-do people. We call them posh people in Britain. I don't think he liked his fellow man at all. I think he had a contempt for most of them. Uh, I think he was, uh, in the period that we're talking about in the 30s, I think he was uh, bitterly ashamed of being so poor. He wanted money to lead a, a, a more pleasant life. Uh, he used to say that his uh, taste were very simple and uh, he uh, didn't mind uh, living with very poor people. I, th I think he did. I don't think he liked it. He also spoke to people that Orwell had dealt with in places like Wigan and Liverpool, coal miners and so forth. He had one phone mailie. He had several snacks on other occasions. But he never shown any appreciation of hospitality. Added to that, you have American admirers such as the linguist Noam Chomsky and the novelist Norman Mailer. He's always just there quietly, and in, in boxing terms, he's, you know, he's when he the fellow was knocked down by him, but no one ever quite saw the punch. It just seemed rather an economical punch, and then they, there's a the guy on the floor. So that's the BBC one. The other relevant production of the 70s went out on the commercial network ITV in October 1973, a time when the Prime Minister, Edward Heath, was having all kinds of problems with miners' strikes and what have you. Uh, trade unions were very powerful in Britain at the time, and in fact Heath's government was brought down by the miners. There's no doubt the crisis is beginning to bite very hard indeed. Frank Sitanovich, a Canadian documentary maker, had found his niche making programmes for Jeremy Isaacs, who ran the Thames television franchise in London. Sitanovich's project was called The Road to Wigan Pier, a musical documentary, and his modus operandi went like this. Have the actor Michael Jaston read extracts from the book illustrate these with archive film from the 1930s and break up these readings with songs from the folk singer Bob Davenport. I've seen this documentary at the British Film Institute. I don't have a recording of it, but what I will say is if you're into socialism, you will love the finale. Zitanovich hired a Welsh male voice choir, the Morriston Orpheus Choir from the Swansea area, dressed them up as miners and had them ascending a hill and singing all 10 verses of the Red Flag. So as I leave you with a plea to like and subscribe for the sake of my algorithms, I'm going to finish by reading a letter that the TV Times magazine ran a couple of weeks after the programme went out. And this was from uh, Winifred Smith of Corringham in Essex. And I'd ask you to listen to the end because it's curiously relevant. 
Praise to you all for your documentary The Road to Wigan Pier. I have never forgotten my experience and degradation as a wife of one of the unemployed. Those gaunt labour exchanges with their notices no smoking at a time when a packet of woodbines was a luxury. The inquisition of the dreaded means test. The catechism, where did you look for work yesterday and the day before? Tramp, tramp. The pitiful limbless ex-servicemen in the gutters. The enforced idleness. The jibes of the more fortunate. To the present generation, those bitter years are of little interest outside academic research. But fate plays ironic tricks. That which has happened once may happen again.